This is the third video. The first video was watercolor techniques, followed by Dot Takes a Watch, which was practicing our techniques, and today, painting a sunflower. This is an application of the techniques we have learned. First thing I'm doing is activating my paints, and then I'm going to put a color wash on my flower petals of yellow. The second step is a glaze. I have let my wash dry and I am putting a yellow glaze right on top of what I painted before the wash. And what I'm going to do is use two brushes, one with yellow and the other with some red in it. So here's my yellow brush and I will get a nice orangey red and drop in at the base where the petal touches the center of the flower and maybe on the sides. I'm, I'm trying to think of light and I want my light source coming from the right side of the sunflower so I'm going to kind of put a shadow on the left side of the petals. Oops, wrong brush. That's easily fixed with a little bit of water and a paper towel to dab that off. So when you're working with two brushes, know which one's which. Okay, yellow first. Now look how I skipped a petal to do this. I skipped one petal. I'm painting that in yellow. This is called glazing because I'm going over the top of dry paint. Then I'm dropping in color. And this is either um, wet and wet or color gradient. More, I'm tr going for more wet and wet, kind of a tie-dye effect. And making the shading close to the flower center and on that left side of the petal. So I'm going to go all the way around doing this technique. I'm using a hair dryer to dry those sections so that I can do another glaze on the other petals but I don't want the glazes to bleed into each other the paint to run so I'm quickly drying my petals with a hair dryer so that I can paint the next petals. The petals behind, I darkened my glaze just a little bit by putting the red-orange with a deeper red so that there's a little bit of depth to the petals behind. So when I put the yellow glaze on, I'm dropping in a little darker, more intense value with a red into the yellow. The third technique is a color gradient. This is a value change where I have an intense color and I fade it out into or blend it into nothing. So I'm starting with a red orange on my brush. I paint a line, but I don't want to leave a harsh line. I want that line to fade. So I switch brushes and this brush has just water and I fade that line into the half of the flower. You can see I paint basically half of the flower, fading it in. So I paint my line, take my other brush that's washed out, and fade that line into half 
of the petal. This will create a nice shading effect on your flower petals. The last thing I did for the petals was put one more glaze of yellow right on top of all of the petals. One thing about the glaze is you have to make sure all of the layers are completely dry before adding that glaze or the paint from below will become activated and muddle with the paint. So I've dried the flower and now I'm putting a yellow glaze on top to unify the petals. Here I'm adding some veins of the uh, leaf with a green, yellow green crayon. So I'm just going to draw on those veins. It's a much lighter value than the green I'll be painting and I want those to stand out. So I'm just going to crayon these veins and a little bit of shading on the stem. So I'm going to start with a yellow wash and then I'm going to drop in green. So the leaves and stem will be a wet and wet technique with yellow and green paint. I noticed I needed a little darker edge so I put some brown with my green to darken up the bottoms of my leaves and sides of my stem. I found a nice yellow-orange crayon to make some star-shaped flower center stamen for the sunflower. I'm going to draw those in. I'll paint in other shapes, but I want this light value to show up through the paint. Then I'm going to paint the outer ring the same color, but while it's wet, I'll drop in some brown to really darken this. So I need that center completely dry so that when I drop in the brown color, it won't bleed into that middle. I need that middle piece to be a little bit lighter. This is a wet and wet technique. But I'm actually making tiny little dots. I'm not trying to paint any sort of line. Colors bleeded in. I blotted it out with a towel. But tiny dots is what I'm trying to create. Here it's the little details that make all the difference. I'm dotting in the same shade of brown in the center of the flower, avoiding the crayon that I've already put on. I want to leave those behind but below and to the side of those crayon pieces. Then I'm going to switch colors a little bit, add more red, a little more darker brown, and I'm really trying to make the flower stand out with a variety of color and value changes. I had to use the hair dryer to dry that flower, but I'm still working on adding details, little dots, little splashes of darker color on the flower center. Last step is just to add a few shading details. I like to get a really dark green 
and right where the flower and stem meet, paint in a shadow. Also, bottom of the leaves, perhaps between the flower petals, a little darker red, just to make a separation where there's shadow and it adds depth to the flower. These details, I think, make all the difference. time for the background. For the background, I'm going to use a wet and wet technique where I'm actually wetting my paper first. I love videos, but I suppose the downside to a video is the speed at which I'm able to speed this up. This painting actually took me almost an hour and a half to complete, and this background took quite a while. Sped up, it's only going to be a, f a matter of seconds, maybe minutes, but I want you to consider that painting takes time, and it's okay to just let things happen. I'm not really worried about my background, what the paints are doing, I just let them fly. All I do is drop in color. But consider that it actually does take a lot more time than this video will show. And here's the finished flower, a beginning painting for watercolor. 